Right, I'm going to do a video about what you essentially need for bottling and a way to make it easier and kind of less pain free. Um, I've recently kind of got some new bits for my bottling setup and all the bits that I'm going to show you with the exception of the bottle capper um, I got from maltmiller.co.uk. They do sell a bottle capper but it's not the one I'm going to show you in this video just to uh, just let you know. First and foremost you're going to need a bottling bucket. Um, so you've got, this is a, I think it's 30 litres but the marks go up to 25 on there. Uh, basically it's just a fermenting vessel which is just a bucket with the lid. Um, they'll drill the hole for you and you get a tap. Um, this tap's quite good, I've not experienced this before. One of my friends has got like a, like a little half hole at the top there, which is a sediment trap. So I guess in theory you could bottle straight from primary, but um, the recipe that I've had in my fermenter is going to be, or is rather a raspberry wheat beer, so there's going to be a lot of stuff I want to filter out. So I'm going to ferment, uh, sorry, rack straight onto the uh, the bottling bucket rather than you know fermenting in it and, and then racking off. And it has a little rubber gasket just there. So you, you stick that through, screw up the little bit on the inside, making sure the little holes towards the top so that it, it sits right. A uh, good thing I've noticed about this one is some of my other buckets I've had in the past, where the tap sits, it sits very close to the bottom, which is what you want, but so close that it overhangs and if you're sitting it on the floor you end up scraping the bottom of the tap, you have to turn it and you can end up loosening the tap. Um, another thing is when you're cleaning this out, best thing to do is have the tap open so you can sort of flush a bit of sanitizer through it and then uh, close it off so you know that it's closed when you come to bottle. There's nothing worse than filling up your bucket and then all of the, uh, the beer coming out through the tap and then you know you've already lost a couple of bottles before you know it. So that's one little tip is to you know run the steriliser through, shut it off, then you know that it's shut off. But obviously if you'd already fermented in it you know that it's going to be closed. Um, so the bucket that's, that's your main thing. Your next thing is your steriliser. Um, also from the Mormilla. This is basically the same as Star Sand, um, use at a rate of 1.5ml per litre of water and you get a little little syringe to um, to draw it up from that and add it in. And of course, because you've got that, you will need find it, a uh, empty spray bottle. Um, and water, I use the ionised water. But um, you can just use like uh, bottled water. I think the most common one a lot of people use is the Ashbeck from uh, Tesco, which is a pound for five litres. Um, just because I think the hard water can make the, the steriliser go cloudy when you see it. And um, the effectiveness might not be as great because of the, you know it messes with the pH level of it. Um, there's lots of write-ups online for no rinse sanitizers and you know how long you should use it after it's gone cloudy and that but I find that the ionised water makes it it can sit in the bottle for months and still be fine obviously you know the stuff you haven't used and you can even decant it back in the stuff that you have used and I'll, I'll show you another little way of using your equipment like that to decant back in after you've used it um, so that will go in there that's your steriliser your next thing is going to be your bottle rinser um, which I think is a godsend when it comes to bottling. I couldn't imagine any other way of sanitising 45 or more bottles if you're doing a bigger batch. Um, really easy to put together. Um, I'm going to do a breakdown of all the little bits in a minute, the assembly wise, um, and then we'll move on to the actual bottling. The next thing you're going to need is some caps, just your normal 26 millimetre crown caps. So we've got some of them. In there is a bottling tree, and I'll show that set up in a second. Uh, the one other thing you will probably need is a bottle brush. Um, this one's from Malt Miller as well. Um, it's the best one that I've came across, pure and simply, just because of that little bit at the top there. It might not look much, but most of the other bottle brushes I've had kind of 
they don't really touch the bottom of the bottle and um, the best way to keep your bottles clean is when you've had if you've got a beer that you've bought is to rinse it out straight away then you you know you're set for when you come to having it next time but um, if you're like me sometimes people give you a few bottles and that they're not always as conscientious as that and they've got loads of crud on the bottom and that and of course you really will need to kind of clean that out get that in there kind of twist it around loosen all that up and use an actual cleaner for, for sterilizing because this is just a sterilizer this isn't going to clean the muck off this is just sanitizing it after they've been cleaned so all the bottles I'm using today have already been prior cleaned they're you know they're sparkling so they just need the sanitizer but that is an important part I mean you don't want to kind of ruin your beer at the last minute just because there's something you know hiding around in the bottom of the bottle um, the only other thing then is your bench capper that's my particular model but you know any bench capper would do. Um, you can use hand cappers. In my experience, bench cappers are faster. Hand cappers do struggle on certain types of bottle. Um, so a bench capper is going to kind of sort of see you right for the future. Right, next bit I'm going to show cut to everything set up and then getting ready to uh, do the actual bottling. Right, so there was one other piece of equipment I forgot to mention that is the bottling wand. Um, this particular one goes right onto the bottom of that and sits on nice and tight so you just and I'll bring the bottle up to the actual tap fill it up and then uh, put away again but we'll show that in a second um, I've just added the star sand or no rinse sanitizer whatever you want to call it to the um, the Diana's water in that container so you can see that it's perfectly clear I'll then decant that into that spray bottle um, you can add a bit to the bucket swoosh it around and kind of get everything coated in it the contact time is 30 seconds, so you want to make sure that it's all covered. The spray bottle is good because you can sort of spray it everywhere and whatnot. Um, the sanitizer does foam a lot. Um, I initially was worried. A lot of people get worried about the, the foam, but it is not to be feared. It is, it's not, it's not bad for the beer at any at any point. So um, all you want to do is kind of like spray it on, leave it for that 30 seconds, and then sort of shake off the excess. Do not use water to remove what you think. You know is bad as in the foam it's not because if you add the water strap back on there then you've just ruined the point of sanitizing it if there's foam on there it's sanitized if you know the foam is good treat it as your friend not your enemy um, the next thing then is gonna be the bottle rinser this is really easy to set up you have this main body which the actual the pump part goes into that comes through there. Then you have a spring, which is going to make it return. That just goes in the top there. You also get like a little gasket, filter type thing that goes in there. So when it's drawing up, I guess it doesn't draw any kind of like contaminants. Then you just line that up in the body of that. A little bit of work to get it together because it's going to create a bit of tension on the spring, and then it's it's good to go that goes in there and I will actually show you how easy it is to uh, to sanitize a bottle so we're going to pour some of our our sterilizer straight in here a good thing I like to do at this point as well is you know how many bottles roughly you're going to do is count out some of your caps and put them in the bottom of there then you've got somewhere that's sterilising your caps while you're doing your bottles. I'll get a clear bottle just to show you how effective the actual um, sanitizer is at getting to the bottom of the bottle. Whereas, you know, you can put bottles into a bucket of it, but it would just take so much longer. So, literally upturned. Might take a few pumps to get it started, but once it's going, there we go. So, two, three pumps is enough you can see that it goes right to the top of the bottle and comes back down it's hitting all the sides so you know the whole bottle the inside of the bottle has been in contact with the sterilizer some people like to dip the neck in a little bit to make sure the outside's fine you can do that then you just drain off the excess and then put it onto the tree which I'll show you next so we put this to one side let's move that down so our tree Fairly straightforward, some of the collars to put the bottles on. 
that's your base. In this particular model, they screw on, uh, which is far more effective than my previous model where they pushed on. And for the reason alone is that once they're all screwed on and you've got the box on, the very top also has a carrying handle. So just screw it on. This particular model holds 45, but I think you can get like an 80 model. So then you've got a little carry handle, goes on the top. And there you go. So once all your bottles are on there, you can still lift that up move it around obviously you want to be carrying it great distances but it enables you to, to move it around so our sterilized bottle would then just go on there to drain prior to bottling um, you can spray the tree with your sterilizer just to make sure that it's sanitized this has had uh, like a wash prior to that but really the bottle has been sanitized anyway that's just going to drip sanitizer onto there which is going to collect in this tray. So the whole thing's going to be covered in sanitizer at the end of the bottling anyway. So as long as it's been cleaned at the end of bottling and before bottling, sort of just washed down, I don't think there'd be a great problem in kind of making sure it's, you know, scrupulously sanitized. But, you know, it always pays to be ultra clean. So you can just give it a few squirts just to make sure it's coated and dripping. And then, you know, leave it at the 30 seconds and then it's ready to go for the bottling. Right, I'm going to finish up this bit here and then I'll cut to me actually bottling and we'll take it from there. Right, so the final part of the bottling process, all the bottles are sterilized. They're sitting there on the tree, ready to take off. The beer's been racked off into the bottling bucket. The racking cane is attached to the tap. A um, couple of things to note, you wanna get your star sand or your sanitizer, spray it right up into the tap just to make sure there's nothing hiding in there. Spray the actual racking cane itself. Get it all going, you know, all nice and sanitized. Um, the, the racking cane is spring loaded. So once the tap's open and it's done the first bottle, the beer ain't just gonna come all rushing out. It's, it's gonna hold it there for you. Um, you might get the odd little drip from where you've pulled out the bottle. So you might just wanna put a little jug or a little plate or something on there just to catch that. You could always drink that at the end or decant it back into a bottle as long as it's, you know, it's sanitized. So I'm gonna do a a clear bottle just so you can see how easy it is and um, the best rule of thumb is to fill the bottle till the beer is just about to hit the top then pull away from the spring and then that should give you the same level in every bottle so that it's, you know you've got a little bit of headspace in the bottle so we're going to go ahead and do this bottle just make it sure it's making contact with the bottom of the bottle because you've got the little recess in the bottle sometimes it doesn't quite engage the spring there we go just gonna do it slowly just so you can see it's getting just to near to the top and once it's come just near the top pull it down then out on your lever a clear line just there until the bottle then the only other thing to do is take your crown cap out of your sanitizer just dust my cap up That's it, and then you've bottled your beer. Um, one other tip I would say as well with your, your sterilizer, you've got all the the remaining sterilizer in there, which is basically sterilizing your caps at the moment. But you you finish doing your uh, your bottles. What you want to do, if you want to reuse it, is unscrew this. Be careful that the spring is going to pop out. You can put that back in there for now. Pull the spring out, but leave that bit sort of set up like that, like a, and that's basically created like a little funnel. So you'd get your your trigger bottle that your your sterilizer was in. Put that in the top, and then you can just pour straight back in the bottle. So you're not going to waste any of your uh, your sterilizer, and you can use it for 
you know, when you're washing down at the end or for your next your next batch. So I think that's pretty much everything. Um, I think without these things, bottling takes a lot longer than than any other way of doing it. They're, they're kind of, I think they're must-haves for um, for brewing. That you know the, the bottle tree, the uh, the sanitizer, and the no rinse sanitizer itself, the bottling bucket and the wand. You know every every home brewer who bottles a lot of beer needs those pieces of equipment. It's you know you won't regret it. I can promise you that. Cheers.